Welcome to Clark Family Farm in Lexington, Kentucky. I'm Todd Clark. Uh, in 1995, my wife and I, Kristen, bought this farm and it was, uh, at that time, it was about 72 acres. And so the 72 acres was being row cropped uh, conventionally. And so the, uh, the whole 72 acres was plowed. And uh, so when we bought it, we uh, immediately started to put a lot of it into pasture and uh, clean the farm up. It had basically been, been abandoned uh, for a little over 20 years. And so the, the two years prior to us purchasing, it had been row crop. And uh, so over the, the past 20 years, roughly, we have uh, uh, put the whole place back into pasture and, and uh, fenced and watered uh, to be able to, to pasture both beef cattle and, and uh, now at this point, chickens and sheep. Part of the mindset of the farm was that, uh, that the farm's in the, the center of the bluegrass region, and so we're known for our pastures and our grass. And then also Lexington is, is less than uh, 20 minutes away from the farm, so we have a population base of three or 400,000 people that's, that's interested in knowing where their food comes from. And so we tried to redirect what we're doing here on the farm uh, to better serve that market. And so, uh, so all the animals at this point we take uh, from start to finish. So we take it all the way to, to someone's plate or someone's restaurant. There's some uh, marginal soils on this particular farm, some that are, that are best suited to, uh, to forest or to, to uh, trees. And so when we came here, those, even those soils were being cropped. And so just those soils um, have improved primarily because they're, uh, they're covered with sod at this point. Every year our pasture improves and our soil improves, but it's because of the rotation of the animals and uh, not removing anything other than the animal from the farm. We, uh, we get the chicks in the mail as day old chicks. We keep them inside in a brooder for two weeks. Then we move them out to pasture at, at two weeks old and they're out on pasture for five weeks. So a total of seven, seven weeks from start to finish. Uh, once on pasture, they're moved every morning the shelters uh, that the birds are in, and uh, they are fed a grain, a grain diet, so they, they get a little bit from the pasture, but not, not everything that they need. There's a little difference in the consistency of the meat uh, from the chicken that's, that's off of the pasture, and I think there's a, a lot more flavor. Uh, the, uh, the quality of the pasture also improves because of the uh, fertility that the chickens are, are putting down on the pasture. A minimal amount of seeding has to be done. Uh, it has more to do with just the, the management of the animals and the grazing of the animals. I got into the pasture to plate type enterprises about the same time that Marksbury Farm came into existence. And so we both kind of began or started at the same time and through conversations of those guys processing my animals, uh, I was asked to, to start to produce animals for them and then that grew into would I uh, come on board and work with other farmers to show them how to, uh, to work with them, help them a little bit like an extension agent, how to produce animals on pasture. We use a lot of portable infrastructure on the farm, electrified netting that can be uh, put up and taken down in, in a matter of minutes. Uh, the electrified nettings for the turkeys, the chicken, the sheep, uh, the layers. The water system on the farm is uh, is buried but it has uh, quick connects all across the farm because we have to have water in um, 75 locations roughly across the across the farm. I started out conventional. I think that's uh, an excellent way to to do things but in my particular case uh, I find this to be more profitable uh, but it's also the right thing to do. I have to make a profit but I uh, I want to do it in a sustainable and, and green way that I can be proud of and the, the people in the community uh, will embrace. The farm sits in the Cane Run watershed, which is the uh, drinking water for Georgetown, Kentucky, which is only about six miles away. And uh, there's some neighboring farms that have wells that they irrigate out of, the, uh, out of that watershed. And uh, it's so direct that when those people irrigate that it changes the flow of water in Georgetown. And so, so that mere fact is the reason that we keep the animals out of the stream. The paddock behind me, we uh, intensively graze this, so there'll be animals in the, in the paddock about five days out of a year. Uh, so five different times we'll put animals in this paddock for a day and then move them on. And uh, 
that's, uh, that's both for the management of the grass but also to uh, keep nutrients out of the watershed.